uh, as you're aware, in March last year, one of the worst tragedies to ever occur on the soil of our country occurred in this county. Just and uh, just uh, north of Malindi, at a place called Shakahola, we lost so many people, brothers and sisters who met their death in the hands of a criminal organization purporting to be an organization of faith. People were clearly terrorists and criminals, dangerous criminals, organized criminals, who were posing as men of religion, destroyed so many souls on the soil of this county. That tragedy in Shakahola Forest, and particularly Chakama Ranch, remains a very, very shameful blot in our history and also in our society, generally as a country. We continue to send our sympathies to the families that lost their loved ones. And um, I, uh, this morning we have also reviewed where we are in terms of closure and justice, because that's what now remains. As you're aware, the experts who have been uh, helping us to identify our departed brothers and sisters um, have uh, made some progress in terms of profiling the 429 bodies that have been lying at the, uh, the hospital in Malindi. And uh, we've uh, started releasing bodies, uh, four who were released uh, yesterday. Another will be picked today, about two, three will be picked today, and these are procedure. All those uh, bodies who have been identified by their loved ones, either through DNA or physical identification or fingerprint identification, which are enough uh, uh, from where we, where we sit, they will have their loved ones to bury and give them a send-off that is uh, uh, going to give them closure. We are very grateful to the county government of Kilifi, who have sacrificially supported our law enforcement agencies, the investigating team, and the prosecution team by preserving those bodies for more than a year now. We are very grateful to the governor of Kilifi County and the county government for going out of their way to contribute uh, to this national uh, matter, even if it's, uh, it's not even without, it's, it's beyond their mandate. As you know, security is not a devolved function. We are very grateful. We are particularly grateful because, again, the county government has decided to waive all the charges and fees for the mortuary for all that period. And again, we are grateful. We will support the county government by uh, paying off the electricity bills and other bills that uh, we want to pick as national government. Also, the national government will support the families that are unable to transport their loved ones uh, uh, so that they can uh, bury the remains decently. We will support them to be able to transport their loved ones. And I have directed the county security team to work with the county government so that we can identify families that require support. And uh, the Ministry of Interior is going to uh, support those families that are in need. Uh, of course, there is nothing we can do to restore our brothers and sisters who met their death uh, in that cruel manner. The only thing we can do is to achieve justice for their families and their kin. And I want to assure you, it has taken long, but we are getting there. Um, it's a complicated crime involving murder of many people, and it has taken quite a bit, but we are on course with the primary suspect and some of the key people. But we have also other low, lower ranking 
people whom we shall also be taking into court uh, in a short while. I am very grateful to the investigative team. They have done a good job under the director of homicide, Mr. Nyuguto. I think those are selfless Kenyans. They have served the country well. I am grateful to the forensics team, also from the DCI, and I'm also grateful to the, the office of the chief government pathologist, uh, Dr. Johansen Oduar, who has done a great job uh, to help us have closure. As you're aware, um, Chakama Ranch, particularly part of it, uh, where the principal suspect concentrated on his activities, remains a scene of crime. And therefore, uh, last week the government has degazetted the rest of uh, the Chakama Ranch. The, you know it's a 50,000 acre ranch. So about 46,000 acres are gazetted and we have uh, made sure that uh, we don't have any uh, possible uh, grave sites there. But the 4,000 acres around where the principal suspect concentrated his crime remains a scene of crime and is not available for any public activities. We shall be fencing off that area. It will be available in the long term because the investigating team and the prosecution team will require that scene of crime to be able to prosecute and get justice and the court may need site visits so that they can be able to put together the evidence and the material that they will have received from the prosecution. So that uh, area now remains uh, out of bounds. It's not available. And because of the defilement and the discretion that was done on that scene of crime, the government has decided that that's it, that, that that parcel, the 4,000, will be compulsorily taken by government and it is going to be used to, first of all, arrest any of our brothers and sisters or our children who lost their lives, but either they cannot be identified for whatever reason or maybe they have not been claimed or if a family voluntarily agrees, we are going to lay them in a dignified manner on that parcel, and the government will also construct a memorial on that property so that it remains a permanent remainder of what happened in our country. As I have said, this is the worst security attack ever to occur on the soil of Kenya. Finally, on, uh, still on Shakahola, we, many people, including the families of the victims and the general public and other stakeholders in the justice sector are also waiting for the accountability of other players who facilitated uh, this uh, uh, massacre. As you are aware, when um, this thing occurred, the president did set up a commission of inquiry under the Commission of Inquiries Act, headed by a judge, which mandate is actually now to deal with the accountability of public officials and other players whose action or inaction, conduct or misconduct may have contributed to the death of our people. As you are aware also, this being a very litigious society, somebody went to court and blocked the operations of the Commission of Inquiry. There is an injunction, and we are hoping that that injunction is lifted as soon as possible. As soon as it is lifted, the process of accountability of public officials, including security managers who are in charge when that massacre happened, will happen and that Judicial Commission of Inquiry will recommend uh, prosecution and other measures, including dismissal, lustration, condemnation, verification, anything that, any form of punishment can, that can shame those of us who had an opportunity 
to mitigate that occurrence, and they did not. Either they didn't care, or they ignored it, or they underestimated it, or they just looked the other way. So I just want to urge the people of Kenya just to be patient a little bit. We will reach there. As I said, on the very many visits I did to the scene of crime last year, the government of Kenya has nothing to hide. And we will, we will go full, uh, full hog to ensure there is full accountability. So those are the things that have brought me to Kilifi this morning. It's good to see all of you.